Hello and welcome. Today I talk about the poem, poem about my rights. It's written by June Jordan. Uh, and this is a video that I'm uploading after some special requests and demands from some of my readers. Now, um, let me begin talk with talking about June Jordan. June Jordan was born in New York in 1936 to Jamaican immigrant parents. She began to write at a very young age and using her own writing as an outlet to express the feelings of growing up in a conservative home with a particularly strict father. Uh, she is a prolific writer. She's written a lot and she's written across genres. Her poetry and novels deal with issues of race, gender and marginalization. So the key issues highlighted and repeated time and again in this poem is the trauma of being a woman and of being of a marginalized race. As we know, she has she was the daughter of immigrant parents from Jamaica. Her father was particularly strict and she talks about the experience of always being dominated and even beaten up by her father while she was growing up. And this poem, the poem about my rights, talks about this experience of being exploited mainly because of her race and gender. So she constantly says wrong. She says I was wrong, sex, wrong age, wrong skin, etc. Meaning that she was blamed for being born a non-white and non-male. And the reason she was not given a dignified treatment very often was that she was not male or white. And ironically, it all began with her own father, who is also non-white, right? So she also talks about how she potentially becomes a victim of any man who may rape her or physically abuse her. But the burden of responsibility would always be on her. So she attacks this morality, these double standards where the victim is always blamed, judged or punished and the perpetrators always let go. And she is not just talking about gender disparity. She is talking about racial disparity and she is also talking about geopolitical issues. So during the course of the problem, she talks about what other kinds of marginalization and how smaller countries and the less powerful countries like Angola or Namibia are quote unquote penetrated. Now she uses the word penetrated as a sex which with its sexual undertones because very often the association of male power is used with that word. Okay. So by more powerful countries, these countries, these smaller countries have been exploited. So this is also a kind of marginalization that she talks against. Now let me begin with the poem itself. Poem about my rights. Now this poem uh, is like an angry rant. You do not have a very clear structure, but this is deliberate. Now I would begin reading even tonight and I need to take a walk and a clear and clear my head about this poem about why I can't go out without changing my clothes, my shoes, my body posture, my gender identity, my age, my status as a woman alone in the evening, alone on the streets, alone not being the point, the point being that I can't do what I want. Now, as introduced in the earlier part, this is about how being a woman uh, comes comes with terms and conditions which seem very simple but they come from very deep-seated sexism in society. So even when she wants to, while writing this poem, when she wants to clear her head and she wants to go out and take a walk, she says that she can't do this because she thinks that she will never be safe outside and she will have to change herself and be quote-unquote quote, appropriate when she goes out right and here she clearly says that before going out she has to change her clothes she has to appear appear a certain way because she is a woman who's out on streets alone yet her being alone is not a problem but how her everyday freedom is curtailed that's the problem she says alone not being the point the point being that i can't do what i want and the next time the next lines read i to do with my own body because I am the wrong sex, the wrong age, the wrong skin and suppose it was not here in the city but down on the beach or far into the woods and I wanted to go there by myself thinking about God or thinking about children or thinking about the world. All of it is closed by the stars and the silence. Now, notice the beginning of this line. These lines seem to be beginning from somewhere in the middle. It says to do with my own body. Um, 
and we notice that the previous line was incomplete so this literary device is called enjambment this gives the poem a natural tone and it almost replicates how a person thinks so one thought leads to another thought leads to another thought so that's how many of our lines actually seem to be ending uh, without a proper ending and they seem to be beginning without a proper beginning and this device as i said is called enjambment okay and she constantly repeats wrong sex wrong age wrong skin suppose it was not here now she's saying that um, meaning that to be empowered you need to be a man a white man and you can't be young so marginalization of the young black woman happens at multiple levels and then she starts giving you hypothetical situation she says suppose it was not here in the city but down on the beach or far into the woods and i wanted to go there by myself thinking about god or thinking about children or thinking about the world all of it disclosed by the stars and the silence now all she wants to do is to go out and enjoy nature so she basically wants to move out freely would she have the way to be there out on the street she asks and she makes it a hypothetical situation mainly because she has never been able to go out on the street without being conscious of herself being a woman without the possibility of being judged i could not go i could not think that i could not stay there alone as i need to be alone because i can't do what i want to do with my own body who the hell set things up like this now as we keep reading the poem we see that the stanzas are becoming the lines are becoming increasingly unruly it's almost like an angry rant she can't do things on her own she asks who set the things up like this and why the tables are turned to be against the interest and the will of women and especially black women and she goes on to talk about systemic violence i go on to read the poem and in france they say if the guy penetrates but does not ejaculate then he did not rape me and if after stabbing him if after screams after begging the bastard and if after, even after smashing a hammer on his head if even after that if he and his buddies fuck me after that now she's constantly as i was telling you the line feel like it's an angry rant so she says that these kinds of systemic violence keeps happening and then laws are made in such a way that it dehumanizes women she says like how there's a law in france that states that even if a girl has been assaulted but there is no evidence of the male fluid entering the woman no evidence of penetration it will not amount to be rape it will not be considered to be rape by law so the medicalization of rape is irrespective of the violence that the woman may be subjected to and that's the problem that she is highlighting that the woman still went through a lot of violence and the woman is being dehumanized only because of her gender because of her sex then i consented there was no rape because finally you understand finally they fucked me over because i was wrong i was wrong again to be me to be me being me where i was wrong to be who i am now look at the situation she's talking about she says suppose there was and suppose she was going through physical abuse and even after even after begging even after hitting even after smashing she was not she was in duress and finally under duress finally under a lot of psychological pressure under a lot of pain if she consented it would not be considered to be rape now again notice the enjambment all sentences are in a way left off midway and they are picked up later in the next line now here she is problematizing consent she is saying consent in duress which means duress means that if you if you are being otherwise psychologically afraid or under pressure like she gives you this hypothetical situation it is not considered to be consent it should not be considered to be consent but it is very hard to prove in court of law how you know the precarious nature of the way in which consent itself works so she is questioning the various ways in which laws are constructed so that they can be used very often against women and i go on to read the poem 
This is exactly like South Africa penetrating into Namibia, penetrating into Angola. And does that mean, I mean, how do you know if Pretoria ejaculates? What will the evidence look like? The proof of the monster jackpot ejaculation on the black land and if after Namibia, if after Angola and if after Zimbabwe and if after all my kinsmen and women resist even to self-immolation of the villages and if after that we lose nevertheless, what will the big boy say? Will they claim my consent? Now, in the stanza, she talks about geopolitical issues of how black nations have been annexed and colonized even to this day and age for instance, how South Africa will illegally take over or occupy the land that actually belongs to Namibia and similarly Namibia doing the same to Angola. How the power politics and politics of land annexation works is what she's commenting on. Finally, you know, it is the weakest of the weak which get exploited. Now, this is actually historical and political reference to the history of Cold War, where global powers were fighting proxy wars. By proxy war, we mean that when big powers actually fight each other, but they do not fight on their own land. They choose the country, a poorer country, a weaker country, and they fight proxy wars on that land. So, for instance, when uh, during Cold War, when the Rus when Russia and America fought over um, Afghanistan, that was also a kind of a proxy war. And she says, um, South Africa had occupied Namibia and Angola was being used as the land um, fighting for the independence of South Africa occupied Namibia. So, and Pretoria was the administrative capital of South Africa. So, she's talking about all these geopolitical conditions in which small countries are always exploited by big mostly uh, white countries. So she looks at the brute military power as quote unquote penetration. I, I talked about the word penetration and why the word is used. And she says that despite all the laws being in place that outlaw this kind of force annexation of land, most white nations get away with it. And at the end, it is deemed to be the consent of the weaker nation mainly because they can't fight st strong global powers and as i said this will be also true for many south asian countries uh, if you look at the history of afghanistan in particular similar thing has happened okay so and the poem continues do you follow me we are the wrong people of the wrong skin on the wrong continent and what in the hell is everybody being reasonable about and according to the times this week back in 1966 the cia decided that they had this problem and the problem was a man na named Kruma. so they killed him and before that it was patrice limbuba and before that it was my father on the campus of my ivy league school and my father afraid now it continues so here she goes into uh, goes deeper into politics and says that what a white nation brands as a fugitive becomes a fugitive for the rest of the world even though these people may be fighting the white man for the rights of their own countries and there have been many african revolutionaries like this and she gives you examples now this she names a revolutionary called kwame nkrumah who was the president of Ghana, ghana but was overthrown in a military coup and the usa had a hand in this overthrow Similarly, she names Patrice Lembuba, who was the Prime Minister of Congo, but it, he was overthrown by after a very short rule by people from his own country who were being funded by the former colonizer of, uh, of uh, Congo, uh, which was Belgium. And no other white country actually came to the rescue of uh, Lembuba. And Lembuba's trial and his deposition and the way he was ill-treated um, has been actually captured on camera. There are documentaries which actually show Lembuba. So basically she says that black countries have been historically overturned by white countries and all kinds of arguments are given in favor of such steps like Kikruma was a fighter for his own country men but his overthrow uh, is regarded as justifiable um, because of geopolitical issues uh, and you know he, such people are also branded as dictators so they so their uh, overthrow 
by certain white countries is considered to be justified now these references lead to her personal life and she says that her own life and education does not matter when it comes to the question of her autonomy as a person and as a woman so the previous uh, line ends is, is in the uh, sentences of my ivy league school and my father afraid to walk into the cafeteria because he said he was wrong the wrong age the wrong skin the wrong gender identity and he was paying my tuition and before that it was my father saying i was wrong saying that i should have been a boy because he wanted one a boy and that i should have been lighter skin and i should have had straighter hair and that so she now um goes back to her life and how for a woman the beginning of this subjugation is within her own family she says that it begins at home she recounts how her own father would sometimes blame her own skin her for the skin color for she had and for also the gender now i would also like to point out here that light skin uh, even among black people um, would be considered to be a symbol of beauty because of the power dynamics existing in the world similarly many black women would want to straighten up their hair the natural hair only because they would want to fit into the standards of beauty uh, which are set by white standards so um so look at this uh, when we look at these stanzas we also notice that the personal and the political flow into each other i continue with reading the poem i should not be so boy crazy but instead i should just be one a boy and before that it was my mother pleading plastic surgery for my nose and braces for my teeth and telling me to let the books loose to let them loose in other worlds I am very familiar with the problems of the CIA and the problems of South Africa and the problems of Exxon Corporation and the problems of white America in general and the problems of teachers and the preachers and the FBI and the social workers and the particular mom and dad I am very familiar with the problem because the problems turn out to be me now she is talking about the beauty standards the fact that a black woman's nose is not considered pretty enough or beautiful enough or good enough her hair the natural hair that she grows which is curly hair is not considered good enough beautiful enough so in order to be beautiful she has to subscribe to white idea and standards of beauty she also starts valuing light skin and straight hair and sharp nose etc and that's the reason she refers she goes does the reference to the mother who is pleading sur- plastic surgery because of course for the mother she, the mother feels that the child the daughter will have an easy time in the world if she subscribe to these standards of beauty so this rank you know this uh, political and the private actually flow into each other the moment she talks about the mother it goes into a different direction she talks about the cia she talks about the exxon corporation exxon corporation is an uh, oil multinational from usa which uh, you know again you know power politics for oil which has been happening around the world uh, for much of the 20th century now she highlights again the problem of power relations in the world and how very often the more vulnerable um suffers not because of what they are but what they do but actually about what they are that's what she means when she says the problem turns out to be her she says i am very familiar with the problems because the problems turn out to be me it doesn't matter what she does but the fact that she's a woman the fact that she's subjugated the fact that she's already weak that's the reason she's blamed now we see again the personal and the political are overlapping and here she says that the violence leads to further violence since the reason of rape is who she is she symbolizes what has been happening to women around the world and that's why she says she is the history of rape i continue she says i am the history of rape i am the history of rejection of who i am i am the history of the terrorized incarceration of myself i am the history of battery assault and limitless armies against whatever i want to do with my mind and my body and my soul and whether it's about walking out at night or whether it's about the love that i feel or whether it's about the sanctity of my my vagina or the sanctity of my national boundaries the sanctity of my leaders or the sanctity of each and every desire what i know from my personal and idiosyncratic and indisputably single and singular heart i have been raped 
Now here she talks about all the offence that are being normalised. She says that the reason behind rape is nothing else but the identity of the woman. Now the point to be noted in the entire poem is that the poem is very ironic. She has been pointing to the problem to the opposite. She says the reason of rape, what she actually means is the reason of rape is not her, but the fact that women's position in society and women's position in social history has been so weak that no matter what they do, it does not amount to anything. She is similar to, which is similar to other kinds of marginalization in the world. So she will say this at the end of the poem, but you have to register the irony while she's saying it, okay? So, and the poem continues, because I have been wrong, the wrong sex, the wrong age, the wrong skin, the wrong nose, the wrong hair, the wrong knee, the wrong dream, the wrong geographical, the wrong sartorial. I have been the meaning of rape. I have been the problem everyone seeks to eliminate by forced penetration with or without the evidence of slime. So again, as I said, all these things are ironic. She does not want to say that she is the wrong age or the wrong sex or the wrong skin. She is actually pointing to the opposite, okay? She goes on again to mention the same symbols of disempowerment, which is race, gender, color, hair type, geographical location, sartorial meaning clothes, okay, every reason for this disparity is now looked at again and she says that rape is the ultimate way to perpetuate violence on women. So forced penetration with or without the male slime, which is, which is the male, uh, you know, which is a male fluid is ultimate way in which the society perceives the woman as being dehumanized and violated. But finally, towards the end of the poem, she comes to terms with all these symbols. She says she does not give consent to the, to the violence. She tells you that she understands the power politics, but despite knowing that she may finally not be able to tell why women are perceived as being as so weak, she still does not consent to the subjugation. But she says, but let this be unmistakable. This poem is not consent. I do not consent to my mother, to my father, to the teacher, to the FBI, to the South Africa, to Bedford Stewie, to Park Avenue, to American Airlines, to the hardened idlers, idlers, to the corners, to the sneaky creeps in cars. Finally, she says, I am not wrong. Wrong is not my name. My name is my own, my own, my own. Again, she's asserting her power in saying my own again and again. Okay, she says finally, I can't tell you who the hell set things up like this, but I can tell you that from now on, my resistance, my simple and daily and nightly self-determination may very well cost you your life. So finally, her anger at the fact that there is systemic violence against women. Um, she says that she understands it, but not anymore. By not giving consent, she is showing her agency and she's asserting her will towards the end. And she says that I don't know why these things are so turned against women who set things up like this, but I will resist. So towards the end, after all the notes of irony, she asserts herself and she shows resistance. So you can read this poem as a poem of resistance. So this was the poem. I hope you understood the poem. Let me know if you like this video. Let me know if there are parts of this poem which you did not understand and give it a thumbs up. Please give it a thumbs up if you like it and let me know what else you would want me to work on. Thank you very much.